All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you some creative ways I go about planting out squash. I'll show you how I like to create new garden beds using sod and straw, weeds, compost, cardboard, wood chips. Gonna build a butternut squash tower with a hat, some lima bean towers. Good way to support your broad beans. Serpent squash, I find a salamander, and more. Let's get inspired to grow food. Yeah, I'm just kind of developing this little area right here. Uh, dug it down nice and flat. I do these self-wicking barrels. Have water on the bottom. Uh, I'll show you when I do it. some pink celery in front of the cucumbers here. Celery and cucumber grow well together. They're good companions. Uh, the celery kind of covers and shades kind of the stalk and the, the root system. Surprise that we're you. 
16 butternut squash in, new beds, kind of the sod material on the bottom there, and then the potting mix layer on the top to plant right in. I had a bunch of extra uh, enriched potting soil with compost and fertilizer left over from doing my pepper plants in containers in my greenhouse. So that worked out really nice to put a layer of that on top and make holes there, plant squash right in that. And I'm gonna get some drip irrigation on these butternut squash pretty soon here. And another reason besides having a mulch layer, another reason to use the, uh, the tarpa here is to just keep all the weeds from growing, especially since I use sod on the bottom. Uh, it's just gonna you know, keep that from growing through and uh, be weed free, which will be really nice. Keep the moisture in as well. It's just gonna decompose under there. I've got the nice enriched potting soil on the top that they're just going to thrive in. And hopefully they are gonna make it. These are hybrids, they're under 100 days. Uh, it's end of June already, uh, but they've got a good start and it's nice and warm out. And this is a really good uh, sunny location, so. trying to hide now. I found a larger one about two years ago over here under a rock. These are salamanders. Kind of rare. <laughs> There's a little tail sticking out now. <laughs> there you go little buddy. Lima bean. It's the first uh, year growing these. Uh, looking forward to saving seed. They're great in soups and sautés, like on the fresh, 
I want to freeze a lot. I soak them for about 12 hours and then the last 12 hours I've been rinsing them, you know, every uh, couple of hours. See, this one is starting to sprout already. I'm just going to divide these up roughly. I think there's 40, so 20 in here. That'll be quite a bit. And these can get up to, uh, you know, about 12 feet high, depending on the variety. We got some pretty hurting marigolds. They're blooming actually nicely, but the plants have held them back so long. Got some bees and uh, could work like a trap crop for mites as well. We tend to get mites here. For the beans, they probably go to the marigold before. Always want to break open the bottom like that is the minimum I usually do. Not have to worry about the sides so much. It takes a long time to kind of pick them out, but if you just rip the bottom open, then the moisture can kind of absorb through there and the root hairs can grow out. Two days later and we have our lima beans popping. Squashes are doing pretty well. A couple hours in the midday where they uh, they wilt a bit, so I just got this white tarp on here uh, to protect them a little bit. They're definitely growing now. It's been about a week. tower out. I got eight uh, early butternut in here and I used all pathway wood chips that have been breaking down for about two years. Piled them up, added some kitchen scrap compost and some fertilizer. I'm gonna put a little plastic hat on this tower.
Pagament al nou. Okay, just got all the pieces cut for this squash tower and hat. I'm using some fencing and two by twos. We're in like the parking lot area here. Really sunny. Got my lumber and fencing and a bunch of scythe uh, straw and weeds on the bottom uh, for really good drainage and it'll just decompose uh, slowly. We're gonna do a bunch of other layers in there, kind of lasagna layer. Uh, bed creation. Some nice homemade compost I have for the top. So it is getting a little bit late. That's why I'm taking extra care. Very sunny location and then I'm going to protect them um, with a greenhouse hat. Squash usually is pretty wilted in the day and if it gets up to 105 degrees during the day most plants actually stop growing so it'll work as protection and keep the rain off which will limit uh, like rust and other uh, diseases and whatnot they'll just be more vibrant as long as they're getting enough water you know on their root zone all right let's get started i'm gonna put these uh, two by twos together and grab some plastic for the hat and let's make this thing <laughs> Compost isn't quite finished, but squash seems to do okay with slightly immature um, aged compost. Another good reason to put cardboard and wood chips around here is that you know, some of these worms are going to have more uh, habitat to merge to 
if all this uh, you know gets uh, processed up. So just this whole area is going to keep hold more moisture and whatnot. So these these worms will can go down and get to the uh, bed of grass and weeds down there. So there's actually lots for them to to uh, move on to. So here's our Avalon butternut squash hybrid, 75 days, We've got nine in here. Bone meal, since it's a bit later, I'm gonna add a bit of blood meal just to really kick them off and some glacial rock dust. I just mix the two for trace minerals. And we have some 464 sustain. The nitrogen part is the slow releasing make sure they have plenty to work off of. We've got some air temperature water, so it's not too cold because it's already evening. I don't want to shock them. One more for good measure. I just remembered I was going to add some wood ash in here to sweeten it a little bit. Uh, it's kind of late now. I guess we'll skip it. It's nice when it's level because then you don't get like drainage to one side kind of thing. Uh, we got all our kind of lasagna layers in there and our wood chips around to hold the moisture in and so all the worms are happy as well. A nice amount of height here to work with so I probably won't have to spiral them much. We'll just see how it goes. And I did plant them in about six inches from the edge, just to give them a little more buffer zone so they don't uh, dry out. They'll be more protected this way, growing vertical than on the ground. And with the hat there, they're protected from the sun, scorching sun, so hopefully they won't wilt and they'll just keep that steady growth habit. I always hang some plastic around and to encase the whole thing like a greenhouse if I need to finish them off, you know, if it's gonna get too frosty out. All right, if you enjoyed the video, like and comment below. It really helps you get pushed around to new viewers. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Lots more content like this to get you inspired to grow more food. We'll see you real soon on the next one. Bye.